Mercury metal is a fascinating and instrumental metal. It is one of the two elements that exists as a liquid at room temperature. It is a bright shiny metal that exhibits exciting properties. In today's video, I attempt two ways of producing it. There are 118 elements on the periodic table, each of which has its own unique properties. I try to make as many as possible in this series while exploring the science. Mercury metal is a metal of antiquity, meaning it's been around since ancient times. Mercury was commonplace in ancient societies owing to its easy extractability from ore. The mercury ore, cinnabar, is common ore that exhibits a bright red color, making identifying such ore easy. Due to its red color, pigments were made from this mercury ore. This mercury red pigment is called vermilion. Vermilion is a beautiful red color. Chinese culture mixed this ore pigment with lacquer, layering it on top of itself to produce layered objects, which were then carved into different shapes. Due to mercury's commonplace and ability to be a liquid at room temperature, it was seen as having mystic powers. It was known to the ancient alchemists that drinking mercury could create immortality. A famous example of this is the first emperor of unified China. Shi Xiuang, who definitely didn't die from drinking large quantity of mercuries, supposedly right before his death. No, correlation is not causation. It had nothing to do with that. Nowadays, we know that mercury is toxic, and undue exposure can lead to different toxic side effects. Mercury has been used in several products, such as thermometers or tilt switches, but mostly has been phased out due to its toxicity. Elemental mercury is toxic, but far less than any mercuric compounds. A famous example is the trope of the Mad Hatter, whose madness was caused by working with mercury compounds in the hat making trade. Mercury can be produced under two main methods. These are either thermally or via a wet chem process. The ore is roasted in air in a thermal process, converting the mercury sulfide into sulfur dioxide and mercury metal. This process also produces mercury vapor. Another thermal method is to reduce mercury sulfide with another material. This can be materials such as iron, lime, zinc, etc. In both, the sulfur reacts with the other material to produce material sulfide and liberate the mercury metal. For the wet chem process, the sulfide ore is dissolved and then reduced out of solution. The mercury sulfide ore needs to be relatively fine for the reaction to take place. If there's not a lot of surface area, the zinc won't react with it. The same also goes for the zinc. The zinc needs to be in a powder form so that it can react with the mercury sulfide. These are then mixed. Once they are mixed, we can head outside and begin the thermal process. Here I have my thermal setup. It is a bent piece of metal with a pipe cap on one end and a tube on the other. The tube goes into water in case any mercury vapor passes through the condenser so that it does not escape into the atmosphere. This is also done outside to limit exposure to mercury vapor. I can begin heating the one end with the blowtorch and bring it up to temperature. This requires a lot of heat so it'll take some time for it to get up to temperature. Eventually I grabbed another blowtorch so I could heat it up a bit quicker. A cool thing you can see is as I heat the vessel, air is displaced because hot air expands.
After some time, hopefully the reaction is complete. I need to wait for the vessel to cool before I can take it apart and see if I got any mercury. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to start the wet chem process. Mercury sulfide is chemically quite resistant. It can take a beating from most acids and bases. For this reaction to work, it needs to be in a soluble form. This can be done by using a mixture of sulfur and sodium hydroxide in water. This is the standard method for dissolving cinnabar. Many videos exist on the subject already of mer making mercury through this process, and I recommend checking some of those out. The first reference of this method that I could find is from the Science Madness form, posted by Plant1999. We begin by putting a beaker onto a hot plate. To this, a stir bar is added. Next, we add in 100 milliliters of water. To this 100 milliliters of water, we're adding 30 grams of sodium hydroxide. We can turn on stirring now, which will help the sodium hydroxide dissolve. This is followed by the addition of 3.9 grams of sulfur. We turn on the hot plate and let the sulfur react with the sodium hydroxide. An excess of sodium hydroxide is used to keep side reactions from occurring. The reaction will form a dark red solution. This reaction creates primary sodium sulfide, sodium thiosulfide, but also produces some sodium polysulfides. Sodium sulfide is what will be reacting with the ore. The reaction took about 30 minutes to complete. Once all the sulfur has dissolved, it is taken off the hot plate and left to cool. Once cooled, 20 grams of my ore is added. The sodium sulfide reacts with the mercury sulfide to produce sodium dithiomercurate. This soluble compound can be reacted with to produce mercury. Following the reactivity series, if a more reactive metal is added to the solution, it will replace the less and drop it out. In this case, there is a lot to choose from. Aluminum is excellent due to its high reactivity, low cost, and availability. Upon addition, the mercury will begin to fall out of solution. Aluminum is added until all the soluble mercury is reacted with. I only have bulk aluminum, so this might take some time. I ended up switching out the massive chunk for a smaller lump later on. Since we're using the nice bright red mercury sulfide ore, once all that red color is gone, we know that the reaction is complete. Once the reaction is complete, we can decant the top layer. Now due to the density of mercury, it won't get suspended in the water and pour out of the container as long as we're careful. We then wash the container with water until there is very little material left and the mercury is left in the container.
clean up the mercury a bit, we can dump in some hydrochloric acid. This will react with any compounds in there that can be dissolved by hydrochloric acid and give us a cleaner product. We can now dump this into a small vial, and due to the density of mercury, it'll displace any water, making it go on top. We can use a little pipette to suck off the extra water, and then we're left with our final mercury product. Once the water was removed, we were left with 11.2 grams of our mercury product. Now that the reaction vessel is cool, all the air that was displaced is now replaced by water in the line. Now we can go back to our thermal process. I open up the tube and I try to dump it out. And I find that very little mercury came out along with some powder. Now there's an issue here where all the mercury shift came over. So I'm going to try to empty out the reaction chamber and see if there's any stuck over there. After some vinegling, we're able to get it out, and we see that there's also mercury stuck over here. Now, I need to get rid of all the material that I can't get the mercury from. So, I'm going to dump in some hydrochloric acid, which will dissolve the excess zinc, which should just leave me with my mercury and my cinnabar ore. This took some time, but I ended up getting left with my mercury and the cinnabar undissolvable ore. I ended up decanting this and I have a nice jar of some cinnabar and mercury now. We can decant more of this off until we are left with our mercury, which is then removed.
Through the thermal method, I was left with 8.51 grams of mercury metal. Here I have my two vials of mercury. The one on the left is the one through the wet chem process, and the one on the right is through the thermal process. You can see that the wet chem process yielded a cleaner version of the mercury, while on the right it's a lot less shiny. This means that there's impurities in there, which I'm thinking because I dumped it back in, it dissolves some zinc, and it also dissolves some of the metals that should have been taken out when I did the distillation process. If I was to do this again, I would use a higher temperature in the thermal process and hopefully drive all the mercury vapor over to the other side, leaving me with pure mercury. Now in the wet chem process, the mercury still has some dissolved metals in there because I used a natural ore. I could further clean this up through distillation or acid treatment, but I'm going to leave it as it is because I wanted a natural mercury product. And there we have it, our final mercury. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, post those in the comments section below. If you'd like to join our Discord server of like-minded individuals to talk about scientific topics, the link's also in the description below. If you liked the video, drop a like, and if you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing. See you next time. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has